What a great honor and privilege it is for me to be here today, this historic day for Texas Tech University. Uh, before the chancellor comes out and makes his remarks, I have the distinct pleasure of thanking two groups of people, really, um, that made all of this happen today. And the first, of course, is the development office. Uh, these development staff work tirelessly uh, to raise money, and um, I am so grateful for their dedication and their professionalism every day. They are the face of Texas Tech in many instances, and they do it with grace and with class. Um, not only do they raise money, they ensure that all of the monies raised are spent properly and in the way in which the donors intend. So at this time, I would like all of the development staff, not just development officers, but all of the development staff to please stand and let us thank you for your hard work. The true heroes in this campaign are the donors, the alumni and friends who entrusted their resources to Texas Tech, even in this economic climate. Donors, you have truly shown your colors, your red and black colors. This campaign was audacious. It was bold and it was historic. This campaign will forever change the face of Texas Tech. It will ever for change, forever change the way students learn. It will forever change the culture of philanthropy. And most importantly, it will forever continue to change lives. Today we make history. Today we leave our mark. And today we prove that from here, it truly is possible. When Chancellor Hans arrived, he had the vision to ensure the traditions at Texas Tech will live on forever. What better way to honor him and his dream than to join an elite group of universities who have embarked on a billion dollar campaign. Chancellor Hans is a leader, he is a visionary, and he is one of our largest donors to Texas Tech. Please get your guns way up for our chancellor, my friend and mentor, Kent Hans. Thank you very much. I'm proud to announce today that Texas Tech Vision and Tradition Campaign has raised one billion dollars. This campaign, uh, it is a historic moment for Texas Tech. Um, the campaign was the vision and tradition campaign. Uh, there was a vision here in 1925 uh, uh, when the doors opened on this Sunday, February the 10th, will be the 90th anniversary for Governor Pat Neff signing the legislation to create Texas Tech. So 90 days ago, uh, 90 years ago, did they ever envision there would have been something like this happening? Uh, this is remarkable. And uh, I'm so proud of all the people at Texas Tech that have helped in this. You know, you look at last year, and we got our tier one status because we got into the NRUF fund, the National Research University fund. Uh, that was a big step in the right direction. And uh, you, you look at the, the vision that was there in 1923, 1925, it was to produce leaders and to educate people and produce leaders throughout the world. You know, did they realize at that time that uh, the largest business magazine uh, in 2006 would name the number one CEO in the world would be a Texas Tech graduate, Ed Whitaker? Did they realize that the number one rated mezzo-soprano in the world would be Susan Graham, who has two degrees from Texas Tech? You know, there are, did they realize that uh, 
the leading receiver in the last five years in the NFL would be Wes Welker, a Texas Tech graduate. <laughs> Our people excel. It doesn't matter if it's business or it's fine arts or if it's uh, uh, NFL football. Our people excel. They dream no little dreams. Am I getting feedback in this? Okay. I could, I could hear it. So, uh, My motto since we've been here at Texas Tech is dream no little dreams. And uh, our people don't dream little dreams, and you didn't dream little dreams. Uh, I, I tell you, I just cannot tell you how proud I am of the team that we have. And the other thing is that we've always said, from here it's possible. Um, our alums and our friends of Texas Tech, they answered the call. We had 120,000 people have contributed to this campaign. 120,000 people. Uh, we've got, uh, we had uh, contributions from all 50 states and from 39 countries. You know, that says something about we are a worldwide institution. Uh, we've had small and large contributors. Uh, some of the uh, large contributors uh, allowed us to uh, endow schools. For example, Paul Foster endowed the medical school in El Paso. And one interesting thing, most of you know, but I just always want to repeat, his granddad was in the first class at Texas Tech in 1925, and he lived to be 101, and he saw his grandson endow the medical school in El Paso. What a great story that is. Uh, if you look at the uh, uh, endowment of the Bob Hurd Petroleum Engineering, uh, Bob Hurd was the first person in his family to go to college. He uh, is from Tyler. He majored in petroleum engineering, and he contributed uh, a substantial sum, and we named the petroleum engineering department after him. We had the ceremony, and we wanted him to get up and say something, and he said, no, I'm, a, I'm an oil man. I'm not a lawyer. I don't make speeches. And we finally, his wife helped us, and we got him, and he got up, and he said, thank you, Texas Tech. You gave me the key. That's all he said, and he sat down, and we gave him the key. Texas Tech gave me a key. It gave many of you the same key and the same opportunity. Uh, the Hunt family, Woody Hunt family in El Paso, endowed our nursing school there. Uh, the Gail Grieve Hunt uh, School of Nursing, and that was big for us. And the friends of Ed Whitaker uh, endowed the engineering school here uh, for the Ed Whitaker College of Engineering. Uh, our chairman of the campaign uh, was Ed Whitaker and Jerry Rawls, two of our most distinguished alums, and that we're so proud of them and all that they have accomplished. I want to say a special thanks to institutional development. Uh, Dr. Kelly Overly did an outstanding job, and uh, I, I would like for you to stand and be recognized. You worked hard. And I know she got you as a group, but I want to split you up in two groups. I want the development officers, the DOs, to uh, stand up and be recognized. They were on the front line. Would you all stand up and be recognized again? So many of you, and I appreciate that. The other thing, the staff members, the staff members that kept us on schedules, that kept us on dead, deadlines, and made sure that we were doing the right thing on time. And I'd like for the staff, uh, that uh, other than the DOs, I'd like for all the staff and the other officers to stand up. <laughs> also, we're pleased today to have our regents. Uh, we have uh, uh, Regent uh, uh, Mickey Long. Uh, please stand up, Mickey, and, and uh, we have, I I'll get them all. We have uh, Regent Nancy Neal uh, from Lubbock. <laughs> Regent John Steinmetz. <laughs> who had one of the great lines in an uh, executive session ever at Texas Tech history when we were looking at hiring Kirby Hocutt. Regent Steinmetz said, I don't know, is he old enough? And uh, <laughs> said, well, watch it. Uh, and uh, uh, Regent John Scoville came in from uh, Dallas. Uh, 
Uh, we had over a thousand people last night, and and we had a thousand people at the uh, uh, Sheraton in Dallas for a recruiting uh, update. And uh, Coach Kingsbury did an excellent job. Uh, Regent uh, Scoville was there, and I asked him if he was coming today, and he said a lot of things I'll miss, but I'm not going to miss when we celebrate raising a billion dollars. And we also have our student regent, uh, Suzanne Williams Taylor. And uh, we appreciate all that you do for Texas Tech and the tradition of your family and all the members of your family that came to Texas Tech. And your mother and dad were friends of mine when they were students here. And then you went on to be president of the student body. And we appreciate all you've done for Texas Tech. I also uh, want to uh, acknowledge and a uh, special uh, thank you uh, to my wife, Susie, uh, who uh, uh, knew more about this campaign than she ever thought she'd know. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Our uh, presidents uh, on the far uh, end uh, is Dr. Brian May. Uh, our new president at uh, Angelo State. He does a great job, and we're very proud of him. Dr. Ted Mitchell at the HSC, the Health Science Center, and uh, Dr. Lawrence Skuvenak, our interim uh, president, who is really outstanding and has done us a great job. But these are three excellent presidents, and we're very proud of them. One of the things I wanted to mention in, in that uh, I, I don't want to ever overlook the, the fact that Angelo State is in our system, and we're proud of them. They do an ac excellent job, and uh, they uh, set a goal uh, of raising $25 million. They were a year and a half early, and they got their 25 and so they rearranged it, and we upped it to 35 <laughs> And uh, <laughs> we'll show them to get, <laughs> get through early. <laughs> So you did that so well, we'll just uh, go ahead and do it this way. Uh, and uh, they, they've, been, they've been excellent. Uh, we're in a group of elite company in uh, universities. Uh, there's less than 70 that have ever raised a billion dollars. Uh, you've got over 5,000 universities and colleges throughout the nation. And uh, we're in that top 70, uh, really in the top 60. Uh, and we've moved into that in the last several years. And we did it when the economy was not the best in the world. In fact, in 08 and 09, I thought, wow, <laughs> this is going to be tough. And uh, there were days there that uh, all of us were a little worried, but it uh, seemed like that when some of us were worried, the rest of the uh, team was uh, very optimistic, and uh, they, uh, uh, they could, would pull us up, and we'd do the same when they were down. You know, Paul Horn, who was the uh, original president at Texas Tech University, said everything that is done on these West Texas Plains should be on a big scale. And he went on to say, let our thoughts be big thoughts and broad thoughts and let our thinking be in worldwide terms. Well, this campaign has been far reaching. Uh, it's been in worldwide terms. Uh, the fact that 39 different countries, we had citizens of 39 different countries giving. But we've had an impact. I want to talk just briefly about the impact. You know, if just look at the building we're in. We helped raise money for this building. We had uh, student fees. We had uh, money from the state. But the combination of this gives us one of the be best business schools, school buildings, uh, anywhere in the world. And so that, that's one of the, just one impact. The uh, east side of the stadium, when I uh, came here, we, we had, we really, we, they had done the improvements on the west side. We had, uh, I was at a football game and uh, Boone Pickens said, Hans, y'all got a half a stadium. And uh, <laughs> I said, if you give me some money, we'll have the other half. And, uh, he, he never brought it up again after that. <laughs> Lots of times you, you, you can uh, get someone to kind of calm down when you tell them what you expect them to do. <laughs> but uh, we did that, and uh, um, I think Kelly and Andrea, um, Tyree, they, we got together in the fall of 08 and uh, raised enough money that we could start the east side of the stadium. Uh, since then, we've added the seats on the north, and we're adding more seats now, and a uh, new scoreboard. We were adding the seats on the north. Uh, we were going to do it bleachers because they were cheaper, and Jim Sal complained about it, 
And he said, why don't you do it in concrete? And I said, I don't have the money. And he said, you do now. That's all he said, you do now. And uh, I said, good, send him a pledge agreement signed. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't ask, you know, well, does that mean you're going to pay for it or what? I just, uh, you know, I always had a theory. I had an uncle of mine so used cars, and he said, if you ever sell a car, give him the keys. Uh, so I didn't keep selling. I just gave him the keys. <laughs> if you keep selling, sometimes they uh, may uh, back out. The uh, Burkhart Center on autism. And uh, you look at what the, they did, uh, you know, uh, the Burkharts have been uh, very generous. Uh, you look at what we did at the baseball stadium, uh, the golf course, uh, the caches are here, what they did with the, uh, uh, the new facilities we have at the golf course, and state of the art and the best in the country. Uh, but we had people uh, across the board, and I don't want to leave anyone out, and if I happen to leave someone out, I apologize. But uh, uh, Terry and, and Linda Fuller, uh, they endowed something in every college and in every sport. Boy, that's something. And uh, that's just a couple of kids from Amarillo that came to Texas Tech and are very grateful for what happened at uh, Texas Tech. Uh, the faculty, we had uh, uh, over $70 million uh, went into faculty uh, endowments in form of chairs and professorships. The, uh, Maddox chairs are two of the most lucrative chairs uh, anywhere in the world. Uh, both have uh, right at $9 million. And we just hired a National Academy of Science member uh, to take one of those uh, chairs on renewable energy. And it goes back to the first student body president at Texas Tech was Jack Maddox. And uh, his uh, nephews and uh, their foundation uh, did one chair in his name and one chair in his brother's name who later in 1927 was president of the student body at Texas Tech. And they hitchhiked uh, from uh, the Hill Country uh, to Lubbock to be able to go to Texas Tech. And how would they have felt at that time to know that the two most lucrative chairs anywhere uh, in the country are at Texas Tech and in their name? Uh, but they had a vision and they had a dream. We also uh, have to give uh, knowledge, and, and uh, rightfully so, to Senator Duncan. Uh, he uh, passed, he wrote and drafted and passed the legislation for TRIP money, uh, the Texas Research Incentive Plan. And that's where if people gave money to certain items, we got uh, matching funds from the state. And uh, that was so important uh, for us. And that it allowed us uh, to get additional matching money that some people would give and they'd have a 100% uh, match. And so that was very important. Uh, program support, our simulation center that's been so important to Dr. Mitchell, uh, my friend Marie Hall in Midland, originally from Big, Big Spring, uh, she uh, uh, allowed us with her donations to help do that. And uh, I would be amiss if I didn't say something uh, about uh, the city of Abilene. Uh, they, uh, they helped us on the School of Pharmacy by building the building, and they've helped us on the School of Nursing by building the building. And uh, that was a joint effort of everyone in Abilene, and we really appreciate all that they've done. Scholarships. I want to say something about scholarships. We raised $145 million for scholarships. When we started on scholarships, we not only were behind Texas, Texas A&M, but we were behind University of Houston and North Texas. And uh, so we really went after scholarships, especially the last two and a half years. And the uh, uh, JT and Margaret Talkington, uh, their foundation left us uh, a large gift uh, that will go to fellowships, uh, scholarships for graduate students. And that has such a huge impact on us for the future because it allows us to hire more TAs that have excellent grades and it helps us uh, on trying to get AAU status. And, the, you know, I know many of you have given to the Red Raider Club before and, and the scholarships there. And I want to take just uh, uh, one moment to say something about uh, Eric Ward. Eric, would you stand up? Uh, Eric Ward's number 18 for the Red Raiders. <laughs> Eric Ward uh, is originally from Wichita Falls, Ryder High School, and uh, was gonna go to, a, uh, uh, to OU, and then we kinda got on him, and he, uh, he saw what we had to offer. He came to Texas Tech, and he was the first person in his family to ever graduate from high school. 
Now, when he came to Texas Tech, he graduated last summer with two years of eligibility still remaining, and he graduated with a degree in uh, human sciences, and uh, now he's working on his master's. He decided not to go pro this year, but he decided to go ahead and get his master's, and in December, he will get his master's. And, and this is what your money goes for, uh, people like Eric Ward. He's married, he and his wife, uh, they of course live here in Lubbock, and, and he's got a little boy, and I'll, I'll never forget this. Uh, we had lost a football game, and all of us came out of the dressing room, and we were all pretty down in the mouth. And Jay, his son, is two and a half. And I'll never forget the look on his face when he saw his daddy. And it was just, you know, uh, it was like he had just gotten into heaven. Uh, and you knew he loved his daddy, but Eric treats his family uh, well. He treats everybody in his family well. He treats his fellow teammates well. But the scholarship money that people gave helped Eric Ward be what he is today. And Eric, we're proud of you. In closing, uh, this campaign's been driven by the people. And that I think the most important part, uh, this, this is not about one person or one group or anything like that. This is about the spirit of Texas Tech. We have a spirit about us. We have a can-do attitude. We believe that we have a great school, the best that you could find anywhere. And so many of us came from different backgrounds, and we got the same great education. You know, I, uh, Bob Salem used to have to hitchhike from Sudan to get down here. I don't know I would have hitchhiked from Demet. It was further away than Sudan. <laughs> but we, we have people that have given back to Texas Tech, and they've done so because of the spirit. Uh, when this is over, we have a reception that will be here in the, in the main foyer as you enter the building. And also, if any of the members of the media have questions, we will take those. But this time, I'm going to ask you uh, I'm asking uh, Christy Heinrich, uh, one of our music uh, graduates, to come forward and all of you to stand, and she's going to lead us in singing the Matador song. Christy? <laughs> 